every day I'd go on and my uh, re- my recommended would be flooded with just Walking Dead reactions. And like, I loved right. it. I loved <laughs> I, it. sounds a bit evil, but I loved going on and watching people like cry and freak out. You know, <laughs> yeah. you see people reach for the tissues and they're like, and it just makes you feel like, oh, other people love this like I do. Other people are just as invested as I am. Three, two, Hey everyone, welcome back to the Reactor First Podcast brought to you by Passion Fruit. I first want to say thank you so much for the early responses we got on the first few videos. Those responses and comments mean so much to us uh, as we're starting to get this thing running and we're trying to get you know new ideas and guests off the ground. So any feedback that you can give us, we appreciate. For today's episode, I want to introduce our next guest, Kitty O'Shaughnessy. You might know her from her reactions to the hit AMC series, The Walking Dead. Kitty has been around in the reaction space for several years now and she has grown quite a bit in terms of her ability to express herself and her general style on camera and she has even evolved beyond just reactions to being able to communicate interact with interviews with the cast and crew of the walking dead so with that being said this episode really is walking dead heavy if you haven't seen the show there's going to be a ton of spoilers obviously regardless it's a really great piece i really appreciated katie's time and her insight on her experience and i hope if you have some time to sit and listen you'll understand why she became such a sort of ever present voice in this space As always, please like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Please share this and the Passion Fruit newsletter if you haven't been there already. And we will see you in the episode. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Reactive Verse podcast. I am your host, Neurochronic, uh, hosted by Passion Fruit as well. I'm here with... uh, In my opinion, one of the seminal voices in the reaction community, the reaction space. Uh, Truly, this is someone who I've followed since you know i started getting to reactions because of specifically the fandom that she is involved with walking dead one of the biggest fandoms in the reaction community uh that's no doubt about it uh it is uh the wonderful katie o'shaughnessy hello thank you so much for having me and my god what an intro if i wasn't nervous before i am now (laughs) yeah uh no the reality of everything is is that i have really been eager to speak with you uh, for years actually because i used to do interviews like this on a small podcast I had back in the day. And I would talk to, yeah, creators and reactors that I wanted to meet and just get to know. And uh, I kind of put that on the back burner once I got some new jobs and everything like that. But now I'm working with Passion Fruit, who's giving me the means to do this. And uh, when I you know, pitched them the idea of like a reactor verse podcast to speak with people, yes, you were one of the first names I thought of because I couldn't imagine truthfully the reactor space without your contributions to it and like your voice in it. Oh man, that that's I can't even anytime anyone says anything remotely kind to me, I just die inside. <laughs> so that that really does mean an awful lot to me. Thank you so much. Like I said, thank you for even thinking of me. That's nuts. Of course. That's nuts. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um but yeah i want to get into yeah just your whole experience your journey with the channel and like your you know your part again with just the whole space around reactions and fandom uh uh so to start with first i know happy birthday it was your birthday last week and you went to the the harry Styles show i sure did thank you so much <laughs> <laughs> uh i know music has been like a huge part of your life uh from what i can you know f- see on social media and online and some of your videos as well it's just been such a huge part you know along with like obviously the walking dead and other fandoms you've uh yeah. been a part of uh you started out the channel sort of with music you were just posting concert videos uh on like a here and there from your experiences going out um i guess before you started the channel for reactions and walking dead content was there ever an idea that you wanted to do something like music based uh for for the channel or anything anything creative like that it's so weird that you ask me that because i like so many other people if you have an old youtube account i'm sure you know yourself you've had it from back in the day and it was more so to kind of just so you could watch other people or like comment on other stuff um, but yeah, you're you're so right. I used to just upload uh, concert clips. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to, I still do, but I used to go to so many concerts. 
And that was like my way of compiling them and keeping them all together and keeping a track of them. Um, yeah, I used to I used to love, love. And I know that's a very sensitive topic. Some people hate when people record at concerts, but I love it because like I find it so easy to get overwhelmed in the moment if you're not processing everything. That at least right. when you go home, then you have the recording on your phone so you can go back and rewatch it. Um, I, I never really, like when it comes to YouTube, I never set out with, I'm going to do anything. You know, so even when I was right. uploading the, the concert clips and stuff, it was never, this, this is the road I want to go down or this is what I'm going to do. Or even when I started Reactions. It was never this, this, this is going to be my, my niche. I'm going to totally get into this. I'm going to go all in. It just kind of happened. But there was a hot second when I was younger that I wanted to get into photography specifically oh, really? for concerts. <laughs> that still to this day is like as kind of a dream that's been shelved. I'm going to come back around to it probably at some point, but I love concert photography. I just, I love it. Um, but yeah, in regards to YouTube, I, do, I don't think I ever really considered anything, right. which is kind of weird to say, given where I am now. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that, that's that's how it starts. That's how it starts. You know, you uh, you really start with just like the passion for one thing. It evolves into something else. And like, it, you know, it becomes a snowball effect of like you eventually get to the point of like, OK, now this is just something I'm invested in. And you, you become sort of an expert on it just because of the feeling you get from being involved with it. I spoke to my friend uh, Cal Katarn, who has a Star Wars channel. I told him is you know particularly particularly interesting when I can speak to someone uh, in this space who has a singular focus on like a singular IP, and that's kind of like their their niche, their brand. And for you, you know, obviously, Walking Dead is your brand. It's been your brand for several years now, and you've yeah. been a staple in the Walking Dead community for the the voice of like you know kind of what the fandom looks like. I think. And uh, so I, I guess the big question is, there is like, how did you discover The Walking Dead? What was the origin of like that, you know, that love you have for it? That's another funny story. And I always feel so bad every time I tell it. Um, <laughs> I've always, I've always been very obsessive. So like I, like you said, I love music. I love, um, I've always loved shows. I like movies as well, but specifically TV shows, long form that you can sit down and over a course of a few months, just binge this whole universe. Um, but I never really had any particular genre that I gravitated towards. I just love TV in general. So one of the earliest I can remember is Supernatural. Oh my God, loved that. Obsessed <laughs> as a teenager. I also loved like things like Prison Break and stuff like that. And my dad actually got really into The Walking Dead back as, as, as somewhere in season one. And I remember he asked me like, hey, come watch it with me. I think you're, I think you're going to like this because I did love horror, but I didn't like zombies. I hated right. zombies. It was the one genre I wouldn't go near because they frightened me. Really? <laughs> well, I was like, I don't want that. That's not for me. <laughs> and every time a new season would come out, he'd be like, you have to start this. I'm telling you, you're going to love it. And um, years passed. I resisted. And then I went through a particularly bad breakup and it was just a rough time. And I, I had kind of exhausted every other media that was out at the time. And my dad just slid in there again with, <laughs> you haven't seen The Walking Dead yet? And I was like, if you shut up, if you shut up, I will watch it. So we made that deal. I binged, I want to say I binged through like two or three seasons in the space of two or three weeks. Right. And it was love at first sight. It was instant. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and to this day, he doesn't let me live that down. Every time anything Walking Dead comes up, he just looks at me and I'm like, shh, yes, yes, you got yeah, me on this path. Yeah, we um, all, owe to him, all owe it to him. Yeah. We do. And anytime anything happens, anything exciting happens regarding like the channel or if I'm going to a convention, every time he says it to me, he's like, hey, imagine if I'd never asked you every time. But it's true. It, it was down to him. Um, yeah. Because like I, I dabbled a bit, I guess, like I had seen 28 Days Later. Mm -hmm. And I'd seen a few of the kind of the old classics when it comes to zombie movies. And I don't know, there was just something that would just unnerve me. And I was like, it just wasn't really my right. thing. And then The Walking Dead got its, it got its grip on me, man. And I was obsessed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Because uh, you, one of your early videos was like an explanation for like how to attend Walker Soccer Con. And that was obviously something yeah. that you had done yourself. Uh, what was that like? Um I guess in those early days of the fandom before I think it sort of, you know, evolved into 
uh, what is now in the social media space, um, going to Walker Stalker Con uh, on your own, like, uh, yeah, in those early days of, of the, the era? I mean, like, at Walker Stalker, I mean, it's been it's been a hot topic, you know what I'm saying? Like as a convention, right. there's been some stories and whatnot, but back in the early days, man, I think a lot of people can agree. It was, if you were, if you were a walking dead fan, it was the place to be, mm-hmm. you know, there, there was truly, cause like, I, I love conventions and I've been to so many at this point, but to this day, those first few Walker stalkers that were in London, nothing, nothing compares to them. <laughs> um, I had done, I think, I think I had done a, like a, a tips or like a get ready with me kind of style video for uh, the very first Walker Stalker that I went to. And at this point, I don't think I'd done anything really in front of a camera. I don't even think I started reactions, but right. like I had been to so many concerts and so many events that I, that, like I'm an, an obsessive packer. So I'm one of yeah. these, you bring your battery packs, you bring your spare bottles of water, you, you know, you, all, the, all these kind of things. So I made like a advice video on what to pack for like a long weekend at a convention. And the first Walker Stalker that I went to, I went with my dad. Again, he's like the resident Walking Dead fan in this house. Right. And we were coming out of our hotel to go to the venue. And this, this dude, s- super chill guy, he was, I think he was cosplaying somebody, but I can't remember. But as he was walking past, stopped, he went, I saw your tips video for Walker Stalker. I got my spare <laughs> bottles of water and my spare battery pack. And he just kept walking. And that <laughs> that's, feeling that's of yeah. like, he, he saw my video. Yeah. That was absolutely insane. And to this day, I, I, like I've, I've been to a lot of conventions. I've been to a lot of events where people will come up and start up a conversation or, you know, they'll ask, ask for a selfie. But to this day, that's still one that sticks with me. You know, because I was the like, first, that was the, yeah. the first example of like, right. whoa, like you can have some sort of reach online. Yeah. Um, but man, those conventions it's, were something. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's important. It's important to like, yeah, once you get the taste of like that sort of tangible effect that, you know, mm. the channel has on people, it becomes, yes, like a thing of like a motivation to keep doing it because, you know, you're not speaking into the ether. Like there's there's someone on the other end that's listening, that's hearing what you're saying. Dude, exactly. <laughs> It's palpable, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's like you said. It's so easy to feel like you are just kind of yelling into a void because it's 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 right. hard when you can't see or or directly talk to people like this. You know, I mean, you you can respond to comments and stuff, but it's hard for it to feel real, especially in the beginning. Um, right. and I was balancing a full time job on top of like when I when I start to get my channel up and running, and it was trying to find the time to record and edit as well as working as well as family life and. It was really hard to explain to people, but there there was, I think it was 2018, it was either 2017 or 18, I brought my mom to a Walker Stalker. Mm. And at this point, the challenge had started really gaining traction and I was, you know, getting into the groove of doing reactions weekly and doing kind of episode breakdowns and stuff. And I remember that weekend was just, it was nuts. There was people coming up to me because ev- everyone that was there was there for the Walking Dead. So they were super right. invested. They were super online and in it. I remember people came up to me in, I think it was Queen Victoria. It was a train station in London. Mm -hmm. And my mom just, she was like, (laughs) oh my God. And I was like, yeah, like this is all Walking Dead fans. This is, this is my world, you know? Yeah. And as we went to the convention and as more people came up and they were like, dude, I know you from Twitter or from YouTube or whatever. I think that's (laughs) when she started to realize, oh, you're not just yelling at yourself in your room. People are like receiving it, you know? Um, yeah, I, I think that's why I love the memories of those conventions so much as well, because it's when it kind of became real. So, but yeah, because one of the early videos you made about Walker Stalker Con and your experience with it was that you, uh, yeah, you just, you bought the gold pass for one of your early uh, attendances for that. And you, the way you explained it was like, you just, you did it on a whim because you wanted to just throw yourself into something, uh, that could give you a new experience. Um, and I had a similar experience personally, because yeah, about 2018-ish. Um, I was also just at a crossroads with my life, uh, sort of trying to figure out, like, what do I want to do, you know, creatively, productively, you know, with myself. And uh, I found uh, what would become a great passion, which is a, uh, it was a show called the Movie Trivia Showdown. It was a movie trivia show that uh, that was really big at the time. It has, like, had at the, at the height of it, like, 300,000 subscribers. 
of people who watching it and there was like a it was a movie trivia league based off of like ufc and wrestling so it had like characters had like you know deep cut trivia stuff like that it was very very fun but i did a similar thing whereas like they had their first live event and i was like you know what i apropos of nothing i'm just gonna buy the vip ticket go just experience it and yes i ended up becoming just a really important part of my life I ended up working for the show as their promo editor down the line and being like, you know, and not to pat myself on the back, but a very integral part of like how the show evolved in the last, you know, several years of, of its uh, tenure. And uh, yeah, th- th- that experience to me was, I think, such a palpable uh, way to get involved in something that you really love. And for you, uh, that was Walking Dead. That was Walking Dead when you got involved uh, through your channel and Walker Stalker Con, the fandom, stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, was there a process uh, behind sort of figuring out you want to do something creative you know for the show beyond just like you know giving tips and stuff like that what was, was there anything that you that evolved into like what the reactions would become i yes and no i've always been a very creative kind of out there person like as you can see you know <laughs> i mean office jobs all that kind of stuff it just it, it wasn't for me um even as a kid like i was always it's it, I was always this weird balance of being super extroverted and out there and loud and also incredibly shy and incredibly introverted, you know? So, like, I, I was working retail at the time, which... It, I loved my shop and I loved the people that I worked with, but it wasn't for me, you know? Right. Um, I've, I've always been very obsessive about media in particular, all types, like, like I've said. But I never really considered that that could be a job or that that could be anything. It was just something that I liked, something that I ran away to, to hide in, you know. Mm -hmm. And then after Walker Stalker, I think I started reactions sometime around one of the conventions that I went to. Um, And I mean, I knew nothing. (laughs) I knew nothing about editing videos. I I, I remember I had to Google, like, how, how do you edit a video? Right. I didn't know how to do it. I I didn't even have the the picture in picture, so I didn't even have the episode on screen at me because I didn't know how to get it on the screen, you know. <laughs> but I yeah. was like, man, I know people are obsessive about the show, and I know that they love it like I do, and I just right. wanted to kind of be a part of that. I wanted to get talking to people, you know, maybe get into some friend groups or some group chats with people that also love the show, mm. and yeah, two or three reaction videos in, it kind of started to that started to work out for me. People would leave comments or they'd follow me on Twitter and be like, ah, oh, I, I love it like you do. Like, you're obsessed. I'm obsessed. Like, let's be friends. And I I think I... Oh, my God. When did I start? I started somewhere. I think In, I started... Uh, it was 2016. It was season six, like episode 12, I believe. I love that you know that and I don't. <laughs> um, I'm there going, oh my God, when did I start? I knew it was somewhere near the end of season six. Yeah, and what it was a time the, to come in. Yeah, those last, yeah, those last uh, few episodes, season six leading into the cliffhanger, the big you know, gap going to season seven. A uh, very, very tumultuous time for the show. <laughs> right. And as yeah. someone who was brand new to the scene, I didn't, like you're coming in with like zero... Uh, idea of what to do or how to be and I've always been pretty unfiltered but um something I'm very unfiltered about are characters that I love are like my favorites in shows and it just so happened that Daryl was one of my favorites and I will never ever forget the end of the episode where Dwight shoots Daryl you'll be all right And I lost all chill, all cool. I was like, what the fuck? Like, it was not <laughs> flying with me. Um, and I got a bit of slack from that. I got a bit of, you know, the usual that you'd get like, oh, a Daryl fangirl kind right. of stuff. And I <laughs> yeah. was there in the corner like, I am. I am in what of it? <laughs> um, but yeah, man, it just, it just kind of snowballed from there. But I don't think there was ever really a moment where I decided this is this is it. You know, yeah. there wasn't really any plan. I just really wanted to get into, like you said, a fan base that was so prevalent and right. there, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, with the, yeah, again, The Walking Dead was such a huge catalyst for, I think, the reaction space because it was yeah. like that, Game of Thrones, Stranger Things. Those were the three shows, I think, really pushed the 
genre or the medium, whatever forward with people wanting to share their experiences and their thoughts with it because it was such like, a huge hit show um, mm -hmm. that had like sort of this like almost like prestige level of like, you know, anticipation and like discussion around it. Um, and then uh, you, like you said, for those first several reactions, you didn't have like the picture in picture. You were still kind of learning along the way. I guess yeah. what was that experience like? you know, that learning curve of trying to get through, you know, editing and like, you know, finding video and like just refining your craft for the first several videos for that last half of the season. It was stressful because <laughs> <laughs> it was like the recording of it's easy because it is just you turn on a camera and just right. go. Right. But the editing, I struggled with so bad in the beginning. I really struggled with um, friends of mine were getting into it, I think, at the same time as me. So I had friends of mine telling me, no, like, you need to get this software. You need to get that software. And I am not good with technology. I am right. just not. I try. It's not happening. So <laughs> I researched, like, what is the most easiest basic software that, that a five-year-old could use? And iMovie kept popping up everywhere. People were like, it's super straightforward. It's very easy. Yeah. Um, it turned out my I, I didn't have an iMac. I had a, I had a MacBook Pro. So I had right. a little Apple um, laptop and it was already installed in it. And I was like, cool, I already have it. So yeah. I just <laughs> kind of learned from there, I guess. I mean, there was many stressful nights where even at the time, my laptop was old and she would shut down mid export <laughs> of the video. Oof, right. So I'd be sitting there thinking, please, please just just export the video. And it would just you'd hear the sound of the fan turn off and you knew you knew that was it. <laughs> yeah. you have to boot it up and do it again. Um, yeah. but yeah, to this day, editing is still something that I'm not that big a fan of. I huge props to people who can do it and who love it because I just find it so difficult. And I, the, my attention, she walks away, she gets up and walks out of the room and I'm here yeah. trying to focus. <laughs> it's something I never really fell in love with was the editing side of things. I, I can understand that. Yeah. I'm an editor, but it's not for everyone. Trust me. It's, it's, yeah. uh, it's tedious. It's like putting a puzzle piece together every time um, that isn't super creative, especially depending on the edit. It's like very linear, you know, for the, mm. for a lot of it. Um, but you, yeah, like we said, you were getting involved in the show um, for the reactions in the last half of season six, going into the cliffhanger and then season seven, the big, you know, premiere with Negan. Um, mm. And that was such a, controversial time because people weren't weren't very happy with the cliffhanger and then like the the how the season premiered you could you know love or hate it depending on just your personal feelings about you know how it was executed mm -hmm. um do you recall the sort of zeitgeist around like the show and the fandom like at that time and how that affected just your yeah your input on the channel trying to navigate that yeah i remember um i distinctly remember the screen fading to black after it was revealed like, oh, that you're not going to find out who it is. You know right. what I mean? Like the credits rolled and it, it landed that, that that's it. <laughs> that's where they're ending it. The rage I felt inside my body, I thought I was going to smash my room to pieces. No joke. And to this day, I don't think I've ever felt that like passion for right. a moment in a show. I mean, like it was so huge. And then you hop online to see what everybody else is saying. And everyone is kind of echoing the same thing of, oh, my God, like, how could they end on a cliffhanger? We're going to have to go all summer. Yeah. Um, but I remember I in the lead up to season seven, I don't remember feeling excitement about the premiere of a show the way season seven made people feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was people breaking down shot by shot, like. Uh, editing photos to try and turn up the brightness to see if you could <laughs> see someone's shoulder or what side what was it was it was it the blood on Rick's face what side of his face was it was it on oh right yeah do you remember all of that yeah so it was and like people some... were yeah analyzing the the backgrounds behind Negan and trying to yes, see like where, where the, the trees, trees were like you know triangulated yeah yeah yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah I mean that was huge I I remember once the dust had settled I was cool with it because it was genius. Looking back on it, it was genius to ensure everybody tuned in for the season seven premiere. And they did. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. friends of mine who didn't watch the show, who didn't care, like people that I know who didn't watch the show, were still talking about it. 
Mm-hmm. They were like, so who do you think is going to die in the next episode? And I was like, you you don't even watch the show. Do you even know who's in that scene? And they were like, no. <laughs> but I just yeah. know that someone's getting it. Like, yeah. it was massive. It um, was big, yeah. Yeah. It was, a, it, was, it was a huge boom because, uh, again, I think, I think The Walking Dead owes, like, a significant you know, portion of its uh, reception to like reactors, truthfully, because I think they really help perpetuate like the the conversation of like, oh, go back and like see how people feel about it. And they want to talk and it cycles through like that. And for that premiere, yeah, like that was such, you can, if there was a history on the evolution of reactions, The Walking Dead would get a huge chapter on that premiere alone <laughs> because it was such like a huge boom for everyone like thinking like, I want to get involved. I want to you know have a voice in like yeah. this conversation. Um, and several channels that I found uh, we cropped up because of that singular episode and they have gone on to, yeah, just they're still here. They're still here doing things. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so w- when that uh, episode premiered uh i i believe unfortunately the video is no longer on your channel at least i, yeah. I, could, I, I couldn't find I, it in my research i have it it's there it's just it got copyright blocked right right and the amount of times i have people say that to me there's certain <laughs> ones along the way that are missing and yeah. i had someone say it to me recently they were like of all the videos and i was like yeah man i know i mean back then my god you get copyright blocked right left and center right um i think I think the Skybound one is still up. You know, oh, the, 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 the compilation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, think, I think I'm, it might I'm be, certain yeah. that's still up. And I think there's bits and pieces in there. But um, right. yeah, I, I mean, there's certain videos that I probably will have to go back and try and re-edit and see if I can get them back up again. Yeah. Did yeah. you uh, did you notice any uh, any boom or shift in like, I guess, personally on your channel, but also in the, the conversation, the cultural conversation about it after that premiere? Yeah. I mean, like you said, so many people were like, I want to get in on this. I want to be a part of it, right. you know, yeah. and people that had never gone near a camera or done anything like that before were just setting up their iPhones in the corner of their room just mm-hmm. to capture that moment, you know. Um, the, I mean, I remember that week, the episode aired uh, Sunday night, that whole week after, every day I'd go on and my, uh, re- my recommended would be flooded with just Walking Dead reactions. I'm like, I right. loved it. I loved, I, it sounds a bit evil, but I loved going on and watching people like cry and freak out. You know, you see people reach for the tissues and they're like, and it just makes you feel like, oh, other people love this like I do. Other people are just as invested as I am, you yeah. know, uh, regarding my channel. Yeah, that was a huge time for my channel. I mean, it was jumping every day, day by day, like the videos themselves, but also subscribers. Mm-hmm. It was just like steadily kind of, each day it was that was nuts yeah Yeah. it was was there a point i guess maybe around that time that you felt like oh i'm getting some actual traction with this thing i feel it's it's this is like official like i i'm dedicated to this thing now yeah i think it was sometime around sometime around mid season seven i think that i would notice that the numbers were consistent every week it wasn't just a Mm -hmm. once off you know each week people would come back and it would slowly climb week after week. And I was like, okay, well, you know, my love for this isn't going anywhere. I could mm-hmm. sit and talk all day, every day about this. I could talk to a wall and hold a conversation about why I love this show or whatever. Um, yeah, there, I think it was around season seven that I was like, okay. I There was somewhat of a rough plan put into place where it was, I'm going to do reaction videos and then I'm going to do chat videos regarding the episodes. Um you know, Q&A is based on The Walking Dead, see what people are saying, what people are thinking, what they hope to see in upcoming episodes and stuff. Yeah, I, around mid-season seven towards the end, I think. Because, right, right. like you said, there was a boom at the end of season six and at the start of season seven. So yeah. once that kind of faded and I was like, okay, but people are still coming back. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, well, maybe there's something here. Surprisingly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because then the show, you know, would go on for as we know but for you know four or five more seasons mm, with yeah. uh, uh with a handful of bumps along the way with like people sort of you know having their own opinion but like you know what they did or didn't like about the show yeah. and i'll preface all this by saying like the show for also for me is very important because um i uh discovered it yes around the end of season one and then uh season two i watched regularly and then when season three was about, to, was about to come out they were playing a marathon of it on amc and uh i was at home yeah. visiting my parents and my mom 
was watching episode as, as as I was watching and she was like what is this show this seems really interesting and so I was like oh it's called The Walking Dead like it's kind of scary I don't know if you like it but she we watched that finished that episode she's like oh I want to know what happens next so I was like oh maybe maybe we should watch the previous episodes then so you'll get what's going on so we binge watched season one we binge watched season two and uh yeah we both found fell in love with it and it became a show that we shared um, between the two of us, which we which we just didn't really have a show like that ever. Like I'm pretty close with my mom. We don't have any issues, but um, I live in L.A. She lives up in Central California, and we don't text every day or anything like that. But like The Walking Dead was something that we I am grateful I was able to finish like in its entirety, like you know from beginning to end with her and take up like yes, like almost a decade of my life with her. And I'll look back on that fondly because I'm, I I never had it that with her. I remember. The episode with the the infamous dumpster, you know, episode with Glenn. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was at work. Gaze. Yep. <laughs> I was at work, and she called me in the middle of the day, like saying, like I had to call call you because I saw the episode with Glenn, and I was like freaking out, and I couldn't, you know, I I was jumping oh. up and down. My dad said she was like jumping up and down out of her out of the couch, you know, screaming at the TV, and she's never done that for any show, like any like I think ever. And uh, I, I remember that specifically and thinking like, yeah, that's very special um, that I'm able to just chat with her about that. And we were able to f- finish the show. Like, I'm, I'm grateful that the show kind of finished because it feels like a, a sort of cathartic, you know, experience to be able to look back and have that for myself with her. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, but for the show, I guess, you know, there's there's tons of, you know, uh, highs and lows that people have with it. For you, what was there um, ever a time when you thought to yourself like the show is taking turns that you might disagree with, you know, sort of creatively, even though you were clearly a diehard fan through and through. The funny thing about that is the only point that I felt that, and I know this is a hot topic and I can already hear people yelling. (laughs) The only time that I felt that was probably season two, to be honest. I mean, I, I don't know how strong and how, full steam ahead season one was that the kind of somewhat slower pace of season two Mm -hmm. for me I was like come on (laughs) you know that there were certain episodes that just dragged or certain storylines that I didn't necessarily care for or stuff like that and it's funny because season three and four are probably my favorite seasons and they came directly after season two Mm -hmm. um yeah probably probably season two because I just I know people love that and I understand for certain characters and certain things, it is quite a big season, but just, yeah, I don't know, thematically or pace, the pacing of it as well, of season two, I found to be a bit dragging its heels. Yeah. I remember, I remember at the time when season two was airing, that was, that was a pretty popular opinion. Actually, a lot of people were like, you know, coming hot off of season one, they're like, oh, like this season is very slow. And I don't know how I feel about um, uh, Glenn Mazzara coming on at the time to replace uh, Frank Darabont, Mm. thinking that, that, yeah, the tone of it had changed too much. Um, Is there an era of the series that you particularly enjoy, you know, more than others? Like if it's either, you know, through a season arc or like a a showrunner that you think you, that was probably your favorite time? I could talk forever about this. <laughs> um, I loved the prison arc. I loved yeah. the prison arc. I I just, yeah, I think it was just what we needed after season two. In, in mm. my opinion, at least. I loved everything about it. I loved the set. I loved the drama. I just yeah. absolutely adored that. But I also, in my opinion, maybe it's because it's when all of this started for me. I find season six and season seven to be my favorites. And to yeah. this day, if I rewatch the show, those are the two seasons that just hit me the hardest. Right. Because that's when this all kind of began for me. And yeah. I, and when I'm watching the episodes, I can remember what I was doing the day I sat down to do the reaction, you know, to watch the episode for the first time. Or right. I, I can remember whatever was happening around the time that those episodes were airing. And mm-hmm. it's, yeah, see, probably season six and seven, even though I know, I know a lot of people say it about the lineup that they can't go back and rewatch it because it's, it's too much or whatever. Again, maybe mm-hmm. I'm just a bit twisted, but I <laughs> I think that's one of the most fantastic scenes in TV history. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So six and seven and the whole savior arc and Negan coming in there swinging. Loved it. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, my mom still hasn't rewatched that episode since we first saw it. She was, same she with was mine. pretty distraught. Yeah. Same with mine. <laughs> yeah. My mom is the yeah. exact same. She was like, I ain't never doing that again. And she spent half yeah. of it hiding behind a cushion. 
She was like, yeah, no, yeah, <laughs> once yeah. is enough. Obviously, from from the dumpster <laughs> incident, she was very she's very fond of Glenn. And uh, mm-hmm. I remember when I when I read that scene in the comics, like it was very uh, disheartening. It was very disturbing. Uh, I I felt you know really depressed after I read that in the comics, and then so I know how she was feeling when she saw it on TV, you know, for the first time. And she was she was very very heated. She was she was very angry with Jeffrey D. Morgan, <laughs> like so specifically. <laughs> she was not happy to see him on the couch and the Talking Dead afterwards. <laughs> I think a lot of people shared that opinion, and yeah. <laughs> he's so charismatic as well, and he's so lovely that he yeah. does come on like with this larger than life energy and he's just so happy to be there and i remember right. that i remember that talking dead everyone in the audience was just sitting there looking at him and he's like no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh god yeah yeah it was a it was a, a great time <laughs> looking back at it truthfully uh and then you eventually evolved into you know yes becoming a fan of the show but then mm-hmm. starting to contribute your own voice in a different way by doing the interviews with the cast and crew of the show um i think the first one you did was was with carrie payton uh is that, yeah. is that correct how did that come about how did, i guess how did the decision to start doing that come about and then how did you end up you know roping carrie in for that i that that is one of my favorite things i've probably ever done to this day and yeah. like how that even came about still baffles me so you know i'm sure as you know i love talking i'm very talkative i'm very (laughs) chatty um and i love i love listening to people so i i mean from from a really young age i would have these fascinations with i would say actors but musicians as well so I would mm-hmm. go through and binge every interview they ever did, every behind the scenes featurette that was possible that they were involved in. And right. I just loved listening to um, creative minds speak, you know, and, and, and you do kind of find after a while that a lot of the a lot of the questions kind of follow similar patterns or that there's certain questions right. that are very with certain actors. There's certain questions that they always get asked. And when you mm-hmm. click play on an interview, on an interview, it's like you're waiting for that question to come up. And nine times out of ten, it does. Right. Um, that's just one of the things you learn being a very obsessed fan girl, or being a very obsessed <laughs> fan, I guess, as you would know yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I think it was. I think it was just after Zeke made his appearance. Sometime around then, or it was just sometime after that, I went to, again, a walker stalker. My God, does everything lead back to those conventions? (laughs) And I was like, I have to meet Carrie. Oh, my God. I just, he just seems like such a sweetheart. He's exactly as you'd imagine him to be, Mm -hmm. right? He's super approachable and chill. So I queued up to meet him and, um, you know, nervously going through in my head what I was going to say so I didn't mess it up because I was like, I don't know, for some reason, I was like, he laugh at you if you mess it up. Don't be stupid. <laughs> so I'm there going through in my head what I'm going to say. Very nice, very nice guy. And then just before I left, he passed comment on my hair. At, at the time, I had like a, a mohawk or something shaved in. Mm-hmm. And I had just dyed it black. And he just passed comment and he was like, I really liked it when it was pink. Oh, uh, And yeah. I just kind of went, oh, cool. Yeah, thanks. And then I stopped and was like, <laughs> how'd you know i had pink hair yeah and he was like i've seen you online i've seen your videos like they're really funny right. <laughs> the whole room came to a stop uh, i felt every like i it's like i could feel the tension yeah. begin to like radiate off of me yeah and i was like thanks bye <laughs> and i just turned around and left and i'll never forget trying to find my mother mm-hmm, she yeah. my mother is my best friend in the world and she does all of these things with me all the events and stuff mm-hmm. So I was like, I got, I got to find her. I'm about to start crying in the middle of this convention center. <laughs> so found her and was like, mother. And she was looking like, yeah, was he nice? <laughs> yeah. And I remember all I said to her was, he knew me. And she was like, what do you mean? So I, I kind of told her and she was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Yeah. So, um... I think he followed me around that time on Twitter and I sent him a message and I was just like, dude, you you made my day. You know, you're such a nice guy, super chill to talk to. I love what you do. Um, something along those lines. And he responded and was just like, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, like to echo what he'd said. He was like, I, I've, I've seen your stuff and your passion for the show is super out there. <laughs> um, 
And I think I left it for a little bit. And then I was like, man, I really want to talk to him. I want to hear about his experience behind the scenes, <laughs> you know, not just what it was like to be Zeke, but get into the real like nitty gritty. And I, I kind of knew I was like, he strikes me as someone that has stories. Right. You know, and I and I would love to hear them. And I think my viewers would love to hear them. So I shot him a message and was like, you know, this could be way out of line. And if it is totally OK, you can you can totally say no. But um, I'd love to get to chat to you about your time on the show. Um, And at the time, he was still really new. I mean, he Zeke yeah. had only been in a few episodes, I'm pretty sure. Right. Um, And he was just like, let's do it. I'm down. <laughs> yeah. You... Again, second time he made my world stop. Yeah. I was sitting there like. Okay, <laughs> did, did expect you to say yes. Um, such such a nice dude. And then what was the prep like that for? <laughs> <laughs> the prep. Oh my god, the prep for that was intense. Um, I I live with my family, so we're a very busy household, mm -hmm. very hustle and bustle. Somebody's always running through the door or running out the door. Or the dog is like barking at herself. <laughs> so I told my family, I was like, listen, this is big deal you, you gotta be quiet because for some <laughs> yeah. reason like if someone hears a dog bark the interview was ruined yeah that's what i'd built it up to in my head so uh i think my family went out that night because it was nighttime because i'm in ireland as you know mm -hmm. so to accommodate for for hit for carry time wise it ended up being quite late for me i think it was at 10 or 11 at night right. and my family you know went out and I remember that whole day I had my little list of questions that I knew I was going to stray from. And I did. And he did. And it was grand because it all worked out. <laughs> but dude, the nerves. I have never been more nervous in my life to sit in front of a computer. Yeah. <laughs> ever. Ever. And I remember I might have had a shot or two of something that is not water. <laughs> I tried to calm myself down beforehand. Yeah. But total sweetheart. Like super easy to talk to. You'd forget He's, he feels like somebody that you, you you've known forever. Yeah. You know. I mean, um, I, I I remember that interview, and I think you. I mean, you did a great job with it, truthfully, because I remember. Thank you. So I, much. I think it helped the fact that you were just a genuine fan of them, like the cast, and you knew a lot about what was going on. Like you had a great icebreaker with uh, Carrie about his arm that he had like injured. I think uh, recently at that yeah. point. So yeah, yeah. It's, it's like that really helps when you know when you really are a fan of someone and you get to know like their life sort of beyond the camera and that influences your your input for the interview totally um and, and that evolved into yes like you did more you've done several at this point of like for cast and crew for the show um it, is that something yeah. that you uh aspire to do more of like you like how do you feel about it now like that you have you you know under your belt i love it yeah i absolutely love it it's probably it's probably one of my favorite things to do regarding like work or content creation. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, I mean, like it's stressful trying to get in contact with someone, trying to get a yes. Right. You know, and then trying to do your research, get the questions, trying to get the thing actually started is stressful. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's probably one of my favorite things to do. And it's definitely something that I want to pursue. Yeah. Is, um, uh, is there any anyone, I guess uh, there probably are a ton, but is there anyone specifically that you're like, is like you're, your wish list, like your, your, your holy grail. Regarding Walking Dead? Yeah. Or maybe or the beyond Dead that. Universe? Yeah. Yeah. I'd love, I would love to get to talk to Norman or Jeffrey. Jeffrey very nearly happened once. Really? Very, very nearly happened once. Uh, I'd, I'd been in contact with him and he knows what I do. And um, we talked a few times before and we've met at conventions and we, had a date set and something happened mm -hmm. and he messaged me and was like listen i mean i can do it at a push but i'll be really pressed for time and i was like look man no worries we can rearrange it totally fine um and we just, we never got back around to it i yeah. mean he's such a busy guy you know what i'm saying he always has a show or a movie on the go so yeah. i totally get it um yeah. but yeah maybe norman or jeffrey or i'd love to get to talk to melissa as well Oh, yes. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, yeah, well, good on you for making that call <laughs> for, for, Jeff, for Jeffrey, <laughs> truthfully. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, people like that, they're just people too. And, and they're super busy and they're, they're, they're all over the place. They're always doing promo or press or filming something. So I was like, I totally, I totally got it. And I didn't, I never want someone to feel under pressure. 
mm-hmm. you know yes so yeah, i was totally. like no it's totally fine and now <laughs> i'm i'm kicking myself but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is what it is yeah uh i feel like you know with the show with walking dead the longevity of the series uh played a major part in people's uh reception to it because uh there was a time in like round season eight or shows so they were saying like oh this show can go on forever the show can go on there is no end to it and people were kind of like either yay or like oh my god like i don't know if i if i want to you know continue watching the show for my, my entire life um yeah. and they were also announcing the spinoffs you know for the walking dead and the world beyond so on at that time uh and then but shortly before season 11 going into 10 i think they announced that the show was going to end but they had plans for like the spinoffs and so on and so on um i guess what was your reaction or your thoughts about the show eventually you know coming to an end and then what was your reaction to this the you know multiple spinoffs that were announced like shortly after what was my reaction no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah um i know it sounds so like cheesy but i remember where i was when it was announced that the walking dead was ending mm-hmm. i was at my brother's birthday party <laughs> it was my brother's <laughs> birthday and um i just was like scrolling through twitter and i started to see post after post after post after post about the announcement and i was like mm-hmm. there ain't no way this is a joke this is yeah. i couldn't believe it because it like you said the longevity of it it did feel like something that would just be going forever mm-hmm you know? Yeah. Um, and like I said, I grew up on Supernatural. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> so. beast had like 15 seasons. I started that True. show when I was 14 and I was like 24, 25 when it ended. Yeah. So I just, I always presumed The Walking Dead to be the same. And there was so much source material and there was so much creatively that they could stray from and, and create like a new, bring up new characters, new villains. I never really thought it would come to an end. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, it, it was weird, like that hearing that there is a final end date, that, that there is an end in sight, that now the, the cast and crew weren't just working on a new season. They were working towards closing out the show. Mm-hmm. It was crazy, yeah. you know? Um, and then with the spinoffs and stuff, I mean, I love, I, ju- I just love this universe. I am the kind of viewer and the kind of fan who will stick with if i love something i will just stick with it i don't care where the ride's taken us as long as i'm on it yeah <laughs> that is very much my outlook so i was super pumped for the spin-offs i was super excited um and then of course the rick movies turned into the show the rick yeah, and the show, and show. so yeah. like there's been a lot of changes i mean daryl's show has changed name and there's been a lot of chopping and changing right. so i i think when it comes to the spin-offs and stuff i just Part of me wishes they would have waited, maybe held off a little bit before announcing the spin-offs. Right, right. You know, because then um, you kind of had somewhat of a feel as to who you knew was going to make it out of the show. Obviously, yeah, that, if they're getting spin-offs. Right, yeah. You know? It influenced a lot of people's opinions yeah. about, yeah, like how they saw the the, the ending for the main series. Because the, like they totally. said it felt like a setup for like, you know, a bunch of like sequels that we were going to get. Yeah, totally. And like, I do agree with that to an extent. <clears throat> um, I think I would have been really bummed out if they hadn't announced them and if they were just like yeah the show's ending yeah you know because then you right, would have right. been under the assumption that that was it but I, I I do feel like they should have maybe waited a little bit in regards to announcing the spinoffs but I'm just so happy we have them you know yeah. <laughs> we have our characters in some form and there's the potential for other characters to pop up and cross over so I'm just I'm delighted right yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, beyond that, though, you know, over the course of the channel, you've uh, uh, you dabbled in other shows uh, that you but you mainly kept on your Patreon. Like you were mm-hmm. you're reacting, editing things that you would put behind on your Patreon and then keep the Walking Dead just for your main channel. Um, yeah. What was the choice behind that, behind just sort of making sure the channel was just dedicated to Walking Dead? I mean, I think it's because there's there's so many creators that I like and that I watch in, in all different fields. Um, and the people that I tend to gravitate towards are people who keep a lot of their, they keep a lot of their energy or a lot of their content focused on a particular thing. Mm -hmm. And I, and I find it easier to kind of really click with someone's content when it is kind of more grounded in one thing, Yeah, you know, that, that you're not going, oh, so-and-so posted, but it's this video and I don't really like this, you know, I'll wait and catch the next one. Um, 
And yeah, I, I like to really keep my my channel very rooted in The Walking Dead, mm -hmm. uh, which it still is. I mean, I'm doing all The Walking Dead. The, well, the main show's over now, but I'm doing all the spinoffs <laughs> yeah. and there'll be, you know, episode breakdowns and chats and stuff. But I feel like there is a sort of freedom with Patreon where you don't need to worry really at all about copyright yeah. or about running into problems. I mean, I, I still edit them. I know there's a lot of people that once they decide to put content on Patreon, I do know some people who do unedited or uncut reactions. Mm -hmm. Um my my nerves wouldn't let me do that. I'm like, no, it still needs to be transformative and cut up and edited and yeah. different in some way, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but there is a sort of freedom, I guess, with Patreon that, that I can do X, Y and Z shows and there's right. a movie day each week and live streams over there feel a lot more manageable mm -hmm. because it's a smaller number of people and you get to kind of know people's names and yeah. you get to know where they're from, you know, what yeah. they've been up to. Right, right. Um. It it becomes your yeah. own personal little community. Yeah, totally. It, yeah. yeah. And then with YouTube, I, I recently started, uh, I think I started it with Mandalorian. I think I started mm -hmm. putting the cut, like cut down 10 minute reactions up on YouTube. Yeah. I think it was see. House of Dragon was the first was one it? we did. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it might have been. You'd know yeah. more than me. <laughs> like I said, I mean, God, there's so many shows at the moment that my poor brain <laughs> can't handle it um, uh, because because that was uh, that was uh, a big shift you know a, a, a big choice to p put that out for your channel um and again like it's uh, you're jumping into such a rabid fandom of for game of thrones something that's you know big but also tumultuous in its own right with people's opinions on it um and house of the dragon was such a huge return for people to come back and be convinced that they need to dedicate their time to it again um, at that time, what was, what was, yeah, the, the feeling going into that and like starting something new that had a big fandom, but that was going to be a, another public, you know, display for mm. yourself. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've taken on shows like that before. Cause like I said, I, I love media and I'm someone who I'm like, okay, if, if I have no idea about a universe, especially with Patreon, I'm like, teach me, you know, like right. I started Doctor Who reactions pretty much from, from the beginning. Well, not not the beginning, beginning from Eccleston, I think is his yeah, name. Yeah, yeah, the new era yeah. of Eccleston. Yeah, and I made it very clear. I was like, guys, I ain't never seen Doctor Who in my life. Okay, please don't yell at me if I get <laughs> names wrong. Please don't yell at me if I don't like a fan favorite because I'm gonna be honest, right. you know. So like, I'd experienced that, I guess, a bit with Doctor Who and with um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer as well. Very well loved, long running mm -hmm. shows. Um, I watched Game of Thrones one summer with my mom. We did, uh, oh my God, I think it was the first four seasons. They were on, they, they were doing like a marathon of them. Mm -hmm. And neither me nor my mom had seen it. And we were like, it, she loves fantasy. She loves that whole world. I generally don't, mm -hmm. surprisingly. But uh, <laughs> we sat down anyway, we binged all four seasons. And then we were like, that was really good. Yeah. And then she continued on and I didn't. I just never got back into it. Yeah. So... There came a time then on Patreon that I was like, hey, like, would you guys be interested in Game of Thrones reactions? Because I never finished it and I wasn't a part of the hype when it ended. Mm -hmm. I know people weren't happy, but, you know, I could start from season one, I guess, and try and refresh things. But again, please don't get mad at me if I can't remember names or or stuff, you know, because right. it's such a huge world. It's very dense, and, yeah. Um, no, everyone was super, like, receptive and supportive of that. So I did that. And then House of Dragon was announced and I was like, yeah. Let's do that. That sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. And then when I started posting the 10 minute versions to YouTube, I was like, this isn't, this isn't as fun as it was. People, <laughs> people are super passionate they are. about yeah. Game of Thrones. And like, I get it. Walking Dead is my thing. I, I, I get what it is to be like a super fan. But that's probably one of the times I felt a bit out of my depth, I'd say, that I didn't feel totally confident with everything I was saying or parallels that I was drawing because mm -hmm. I was still quite new yeah. to that world, right. you know? Um, but yeah, I wanted to try and, and put a little bit of something onto the channel just to see. And after House of Dragon, it was Mando. And that's another one. Mm -hmm. I, listen, I ain't never seen a Star Wars movie in my <laughs> life. Really? <laughs> and Never. I hadn't. And then when Mando was announced, I was like, this looks super cool. And my brother, he was so psyched for this. And he was like, oh my God, it's going to be amazing. So 
I think I did season one reactions for Mando on Patreon. And then, again, everyone was super chill and super, like, kind. And they were filling in blanks for me. And they were like, oh, this this big thing happened, but you didn't get it because you haven't seen whatever. Right. And then people were like, you should totally go back and do the movies. <laughs> you know? So I did. Yeah. I did all of them. And I was like, Jesus, this is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a, wow. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah. That's a huge universe. But yeah, and then... Yeah. I just had fun with them. Even even though like with The Walking Dead, I am quite confident with my knowledge and with having fun and playing around with it. It was yeah. nice trying out new shows on YouTube that I wasn't totally comfortable, you know, with stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, did you, uh, I guess, what, cause you, yeah, you did House of Dragon, Mando, and then Last of Us. The Last of Us was like a big one. Um, was that something that sort of, felt a little more more natural to you because it's very similar to the walking dead in many ways um and i think you had played the game beforehand totally yeah. totally i mean um i played the game with my brother he was he was too young at the time to play it and i made a deal <laughs> with my mother at the time like at the time he was eight or nine i think maybe right. and he really wanted to play it so i made a deal with my mom i was like look i'll play it with him and i'll tell him to go away at the scary parts <laughs> And then like the cool big sister that I was, I was like, you can watch the scary parts if you want. <laughs> so yeah, The Last of Us Already was pretty special to me. I had very, I had very fond memories of it. And like you said, it felt so familiar to The Walking Dead mm-hmm. that I was like, hell yeah, let's go, let's do this. And this, The Last of Us, maybe is the first time that I felt that wow factor mm-hmm. since the first time I watched The Walking Dead. Right. Yeah, I, yeah. I, th- I think I think that's true. I think the I I also played the game when it came out. Um, yes, yeah, like whew, almost a decade ago now, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, around the time when the Walking Dead was still sort of you know kicking up itself. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it has that very you know uh, grounded feel of like being sort of right there with the characters, you know, right there alongside them in the drama and like the stakes of it all. Um, mm-hmm. Is there is there any show I think that you we're considering, you know, for the channel that might feel similar that, you know, like uh, not just for like, you know, cause it's a popular show or series that you want to jump into, but something that you think is like, that might be up my alley in the same vein. In the same vein as like the last of us and the walking dead. Yeah. Not really. I think I considered, did I consider, Oh God, what's it called? It's not world war Z. It's the TV show about, it's about zombies as well. And there's a baby zombie oh, somewhere. Yeah. Uh, it's, I know what you're talking about. I, I'm also blanking out on the name. It's like it's like World Z or something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's something like that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, Z Nation. Z Nation. That's that's what it was. Z yeah. Nation. That's <laughs> the one. I think I was considering that for a while, but I think I had watched like a few episodes of it or something in my own time. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I think jumping into stuff like House of Dragon and stuff like Star Wars that I they were things that I knew. I I've I've had no experience. Well. With House of Dragon, I had I'd watched Game of Thrones, mm-hmm. but like I knew I have I've had no experience with this. I feel like it could be up my alley, but it's still new enough that you you know what I'm saying, right? Right. So yeah. I, yeah, I mean I I take a lot of feedback from people. Um, I'm always like especially on Patreon, it's very open communication. I'd always say to people like, hey, there's a show reaction coming to an end because I do two uploads a day. So if I'm doing reactions for shows like The X-Files and Buffy and I think right. I'll be doing them until the day I die because there's so <laughs> many seasons Yeah, but like there's other shows that um, like I'm doing Heartstopper at the moment as well which is a fantastic show mm-hmm. Um, uh, but that's coming to an end so when that when reactions for that end I always throw out the question is there anything that you guys particularly want to see maybe you know an old classic or a newer show that I mightn't have heard of so I, it's, it's very much a two way street and I, I kind of yeah. trust the opinion of people who know me and my vibe and mm-hmm. they haven't steered me wrong yet when it comes to shows. So, yeah, it, yeah. yeah, it's great to, yeah, diversify in that regard to just have like, yeah. Yeah, like a juggling act of shows and stuff to work with for your personal community. Um, is, is Definitely. there a, you know, God forbid, is there a doomsday scenario you have for if the walking dead universe ever comes to an official end, like they no more spinoffs, no more shows. People, I remember people asking me that uh, way back, way back when I was doing The Walking Dead, um, when I started doing The Walking Dead. And it was like, <laughs> I, had, I don't know how to phrase it, but the best way I can phrase it is, I didn't have a plan then and I don't have a plan now. 
Yeah. <laughs> like I said, I'm just I'm just vibing. I'm just doing my thing for for whatever reason. People like my content, or they feel like they can connect with my love or passion for shows. And it's like, as long as that's there, I'll keep going. I mean, with with the spinoffs and stuff. I mean, you've fears coming to an end as well. Fear the Walking Dead. But mm-hmm. you have um, Dead City, you've Daryl's show, you have Rick and Michonne's show and Tales as well. So like there is content there, but at the same time, yeah, I mean, I'd find a way. I'll yeah. always find something <laughs> to talk about. I'll always find something to obsess over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah. There's no shortage of, of our love for the show that will go on <laughs> afterwards. True. And like, like I said, I'm just someone I just want to talk. And as long as yeah. there's people that listen, I'm like, like I said, like with shows and, and um, uh, the open communication that I have, I'm like, I would, I would very much just throw out a question like, what do you guys want to see? If mm-hmm. Doomsday, like you said, The Walking Dead just stops tomorrow morning, they all decide yeah. no more spinoffs. And that was it. I'd be like, <laughs> one, shit. Yeah. And two, what do you guys want to see? Help me yeah. out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's probably how that would go. And I should have asked you, am I allowed to swear on here? Because I don't remember that's, if I asked you. Yes, that's, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, okay. I would, ne- I would never, good, I would never dream out. to ask you not to swear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you kindly. I appreciate yeah. it. I've been trying to be good. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any, um, I guess, a future for the future looking forward? Do you have any <laughs> other milestones you're, you know, looking to hit for the channel? If it's just in terms of like, you know, personal improvement for the gear, mm. your sets, your background and anything that you're hoping to like sort of yeah, build up to. Yeah, um, I think it, I'm quite a restless person. So I what I want and my goals are always shifting, they're always changing. Um, I wish they'd stop, but like I'm the one that changes them. <laughs> <laughs> um, like, yeah, when it comes to like my background and stuff, I'm super into collecting merch. I'm mm-hmm. super into collectibles and I always have been. Um super into collecting that so it's silly things like build up my collection i'd like to eventually level all my background out and have identical bookcases and bookshelves that are completely level everything is balanced right. and everything looks good i don't think i'll ever get there because i'm so scatterbrained and the background <laughs> reflects it there's stuff everywhere i'm like yeah nothing lines up there's like seven different bookcases going on in the background um in regards to like my channel I think it's maybe because I never set out with the intention to do what I do that numbers were never a huge concern for me. Mm-hmm. As long as I'm motoring away and I'm putting out content and I'm happy and just, there's people there to receive it and there's people that enjoy it, I'm happy. Yeah. I mean, like with Yellow Jackets, I do Yellow Jacket reactions on YouTube mm-hmm. um, and they don't do anywhere near as well as the Walking Dead reactions did. But right. the people that like them, like them. You know, because people love that show and they're super invested and they're like, oh, my God, you know, someone else is watching this show because for some reason it's not a very well-known show, which is nuts because it's amazing. Yeah, I'm um, uh, I'm, one of, I'm one of those people. <laughs> I I think I commented on your, your first video saying how much I, how excited I was. Yo, you no way. To it. Yeah, because uh, I, I, I my my partner is actually friends with the showrunner, um, Ashley Lyle, and um, she uh, for Misty, she was like this character reminds me of something reminds me of something i've seen and she looked at ashley lyle's uh twitter page and she has a banner on her twitter page for the film welcome to the dollhouse and she realized it's a, one of her favorite movies she's like this this character is 100 percent based off of welcome to the dollhouse the movie starring heather uh, Matarazzo, and she's friends with heather, heather Matarazzo as well so she had she set up a dinner between ashley lyle heather Matarazzo, and all three of them went no. out to get drinks and uh, they were just, she was like, yeah, like I, I, that is one, like totally my inspiration for it. And even in uh, later, I won't spoil anything, later down the line, you'll see a little cameo of the movie, it's Welcome to the Dollhouse, <laughs> in, in, in the background somewhere. Um, no way, yeah, that's it, awesome. What a keen yeah. eye to pick up on that. Yeah, yeah, she does. Uh, because it was one of her favorite movies growing up. And so she, when she saw it, she's like, this resonates very closely to something. And she figured it out. And uh, yeah, so that became one of our favorite shows. We just finished season two. Uh, for it and uh, yes I was really excited when I saw you starting to react to it because like you said it doesn't it has a really dedicated fandom but it's not like a huge huge show right now yeah yeah, yeah. and like it, it is it's something so different and so out there that I feel like hasn't really been done before mm-hmm. um with characters that are so they just to make you want to both shake them with rage and also wrap them up in a blanket and protect them. You know what I'm saying? Their characters right. are so yeah. complex. It's it's fascinating. Um, 
but yeah, I, I was never that concerned with numbers. Oh, it's like, it's amazing to see growth. I mean, my channel still steadily ticks away slowly. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was, I never got into the number game. I was never obsessed with that. It's not why I did it. It's not why right. I still do it, you know, because yeah. if, if it was, you, you drive yourself crazy and you just, you'd lose sight of why you're doing what you do, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so in terms of like goals or things I'd like to do, I think interviews, I think interviews and chats is something I'd like to focus on and get mm -hmm. into. It's just, it's just hard when you're, you, you know, when it, like, you know, when it's just you and you're representing yourself and you're, you're trying to talk to someone, you're like, just, just trust me, <laughs> just yeah, trust me. Yeah. It'll be fun. I promise, you know, right. <laughs> getting yeses is difficult, um, yeah, but that's, totally. that's definitely something that I'd love to get into more going forward. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I guess to, to slowly, you know, wrap things up here, I want to ask, mm -hmm. you know, in that regard for, you know, your own sort of personal investment in the channel, um, I would ask how, how do you feel you've grown, you know, over the last several years with your channel, um, personally, just sort of in the larger abstract sense? It's, it's very hard to put into words, but I think I can credit an awful lot of who I am and what I've become to my channel and to whatever kind of presence I have online because mm -hmm. I am I am quite shy and I am surprisingly you, you might <laughs> know it but I am quite shy in real life and I growing up was always very invested in movies shows actors music whatever whatever it might have caught my attention that particular month and um I always found that people around me never really felt the same way and if, you know, if I said, oh, I love this show, you know, I might meet someone that would go, oh, I love it too. Mm -hmm. Whereas I would be able to quote the behind the scenes featurette. They <laughs> mightn't even know who the lead actor, what the lead actor's name is. And I'm like, oh, oh. So I, I would always feel the need to kind of dial myself down or rein it back in a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, through doing social media, I'm like, I don't feel the need to do that anymore. I'm like, no, I mean, yeah, especially through reading comments. You're always going to be too much for someone. You're going to be too loud or too reserved, or you're going to be too much yourself or too bland. People will find a reason to not like you. And that is something that I struggled with quite a bit, particularly in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I just stopped giving a fuck, you know? And yeah. it, is, it is very much a case of, I, st I mean, I got a comment like that recently that was like, you talk way too much. Oh, yeah. And I used to get that all the time at the beginning of the Walking Dead reactions. I mean, every second comment, why do you talk so much? Why are you always talking? And I'm like, did you click on a video expecting silence? Because I'm so sorry. But in yeah. a way, it's like, you know, my channel is like, it's my little setup. It's my little place. And if someone, you know, walks into my home and tries to tell me be quiet, I'll be like, there's the door. Off you go. Yeah. yeah. And I feel like that kind of um, confidence and devil may care attitude I don't know that I would have come to this place without having to deal with it and having to face that kind of scrutiny mm -hmm. as much as I did with being online, you know, even silly things down to like swearing. I'm a, I'm not a very sweary individual. I swear a perfectly adequate amount. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, even something as simple as that, having a constant stream of opinions on that was, was a lot to do with, especially I was, I was 19 when I started, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I feel like being online, having a channel, it's made me more outgoing. It's made me a bit more ballsy. It's made me feel more like, well, especially like with the interviews, if you don't try, you'll never know, you yeah. know, you can sit and wonder what if forever. And I've, I've had people, um, message me or say like, look, I'd love to get into doing what you do. What advice do you have? And my advice is always just, just do it. Just find a way to make it happen. You don't need the best equipment. You don't need the top of the range stuff. If the passion is there and the personality is there and you, you truly love what you're making content on, it's going to shine. Right. You know, um, but I don't know that I would have become that secure in myself if, if I hadn't, if I hadn't dealt with the last few years online and it really mm. has helped. It's, it's helped with confidence. It's helped with the way I fall in love with things now, the way I would fall in love with the show and like, like with The Last of Us. I mean, that hit me like a, like a train to the face, right. like that show from, you know, and it happened in real time. And other people were like, dude, you're, you're crazy. Like you're, <laughs> you're obsessed. And I'm there crying on camera. Like, I know, I know I am. <laughs> um, I don't even know that, you know, back, back at the beginning of the Walk of Dead reactions, I don't know that I would have been that myself. 
Yeah. You know, and that's that's so sad to think that people feel the need to dilute themselves or dial it down or hide your flame, whatever that may be. So mm-hmm. I guess that's one of my proudest things is that I've really eased into myself and grown as a person from everything that's happened the last few years. That's great. That's a, it's a very beautiful note to uh, to wrap this up with, <laughs> truthfully. Uh, I was uh, just going to say that was a very long winded answer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> that's OK. That's, uh, that's 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 what we're here for. Um, I do have, uh, yes, uh, one final questionnaire, our final 10 questions uh, to wrap mm-hmm. things up, inspired by the sort of inside the actor studio press questionnaire uh, to uh, just give you 10 questions down the barrel. Uh, you can uh, elaborate or not elaborate as much as you want. Uh, so okay. let's get started. Uh, question one, which is, uh, what is your favorite TV show? I think we might know that. I don't think I've ever mentioned it on camera. I don't know. <laughs> the Walking Dead. Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure. Um, mm-hmm. What is your favorite film? Oh, I don't get asked that that often. Uh, <laughs> I would probably say The Crow. Wow. Really? Yeah. I mean, not 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 no judgment. I just like that. That's uh, it makes sense. Just, I just didn't see that coming. I guess. Yeah. I mean, I remember watching that when I was. 13 or 14 yeah. um it was my first real introduction to horror movies i did like bram stoker's dracula mm-hmm. all the classics and i remember when i got to the crow it was a movie that my mom had loved and i remember her telling me i really liked this film and i don't know it was something about the soundtrack the way it was shot the kind of grungy vibe to it that it, it, yeah. it hit at that sweet spot i was the perfect age for that kind of aesthetic and to this day i actually rewatched it recently i adore that movie yeah, yeah, the, crow. yeah the, the aesthetic makes sense. I I, I can see that. <laughs> uh, what <laughs> stresses you? <laughs> what stresses you out? The short runs would be what doesn't. <laughs> um, what stresses me out? Not having something to do. Yeah, I I, I always I work that. best. I have lists for every day. I mean, I'm all about balance. You know, family life personal relationships, you time, downtime. Totally. And yeah, I feel like if I'm idle for too long, if I don't have something to do or something to work on, or if I'm not doing something for somebody, that stillness makes me very uneasy. Not a fan. So yeah, probably standing still. I, I can see that. I, I can relate <laughs> to, to an extent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what helps you relax? Either music or my mom. Mm-hmm. She, the joke in my house is she is my chill pill. She really <laughs> is. I don't know. I don't know how she does it, but just her, her, her vibe, you know, her aura relaxes me. I could be having the most stressful day. I could be in the worst mood. I could be like, don't come near me. The vibes are so not it. And she'll just come and sit and have a cup of tea. And within half an hour, I'm chill. Yeah. What was I stressed about? I don't even remember. My partner even laughs about it. He even says it to me. If I get stressed, he's like, just go talk to your mom. Have you talked to your mom about it? Go talk to your mom. And I'm like, yeah, so true. Good idea. So yeah, either talking to her or music. I have a playlist for every possible scenario and different voices for different vibes. Some music <laughs> as well. Yeah. Great. That might, might answer our next question, which is uh, what pastime do you enjoy outside of film and TV the most? Yeah. Concerts. Concerts. Yeah. I can see that. Concerts. I... <laughs> They've always uh, specifically concerts like over yeah. just like music. Yeah. Yeah. Concerts. They've always been one of my biggest loves. My first show ever was a band called McFly. I don't know oh, if you've yeah. heard of them. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. an English band. Um, I my dad, <laughs> my dad, God bless him. He had to sneak me in. I think it was an over 16s gig and I was 11 <laughs> and he went with me. We flew to London. It was my first time going to London. Um. And I very nearly didn't get in. They were like, they needed my ID. And my dad was like, I'm her dad. We are in seated. She's not right. going to be in the mosh pit. She's going to be with me. Yeah. Um. We eventually got in, thankfully. Uh, and from that first concert, you know, when the lights go down, mm-hmm. music comes up and it's the atmosphere. It's everything about it. But I'm pretty selective when it comes to concerts. I don't, I'm not like a concert goer in terms of I'll go see anybody. All right. It has to be someone that I love. That makes sense. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, like last last week, I ditched my whole family for Harry Styles, and I was like, oh, yeah. "Sorry, but I'm not. I'm not at all. I'm going." <laughs> yeah. Um, what 
uh, what would be your dream profession besides uh, reacting or maybe whatever profession you might have now? There was a long time I wanted to become a counselor. I wanted to work with really? the youth. So like um, young adults, teens, I really, really was interested in that. And I still kind of am. I got accepted into college for that, actually. Um, yeah, I, the arts always interested me. So things like photography or things like that. But I always liked the idea of being a counselor or a therapist, specifically dealing with the youth, yeah. teens and stuff. Because I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I feel like they could do with someone to tell them it's okay. It's okay to not have everything figured out. It's okay. I really, I really, my parents are both teachers um, and my sister works with children. So yeah, it's oh, kind really? of a family thing as well. Yeah. Um, ha have you ever seen the movie Short Term 12? Uh, who's in it? Uh, Brie Larson is the main character in it. Yes, I have. Uh, is Ryan Gosling also in that? Uh, he's not. No, it is uh, John Gallagher Jr. And a handful of other uh, actors that went up to Rami Malek. Um, yeah, if you Rami have not. Malek. Yeah, if you have not, I would suggest it. It's uh, I have, one of favorite, my favorite. Film I have ever. no. It just it rang a bell with me, and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, I've seen it, but why did I watch it? Rami Malek. I have. I have seen it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's my my favorite film of all time. Um, Great movie. Yeah. Uh, what? So this is the. This might be this is, obvi this is an obvious answer. I ask everyone else this, but what mm -hmm. uh, show gave you your favorite reaction experience? I would say let's let's. Uh, the obvious answer might be Walking Dead. So let's go beyond that. If one of the other shows for your Patreon or for the mm -hmm. new shows on the channel, like what, what one of those shows is, do you think is giving you your favorite reaction reaction experience? You, for me to sit down and, and film it? Uh, yeah, film it. Like your memories of doing it, the reception to it. Probably The Last of Us. Yeah. Yeah, probably The Last of Us. Because like I said, it's it's been, it was one of the first shows that really... I feel like it, it reawoken like my obsessive love for TV, you know, mm -hmm. like just took it to that next level that I hadn't felt in a long time. And um, yeah, it brought a whole bunch of new people in, new people to talk to, to talk shows about or talk stuff about shows and, and compare and contrast to other TV shows that we'd seen. And it really gave me back my spark. And um. Yeah, sh shortly after. It was somewhere around, somewhere near the end, I think. Um, I woke up one morning to see that Pedro had followed me on Instagram. And oh, really? I oh. spent all morning crying. I'm not joking. <laughs> that, not that's joking. amazing. I mean, we can see the, obviously, the, the poster behind you, <laughs> how important that might be. I don't see anything behind me, no. I'm very <laughs> chill. I don't have nothing left behind me. <laughs> Um, but I I loved him since Game of Thrones. Um, All right. Especially because like you know Oberyn, he was one of my first experiences uh, with a bisexual character on TV, mm -hmm. and that was just hugely impactful to me. At I don't know, I was fourteen or fifteen, um, yeah. back when I first watched. Because uh, like I said, I got from season one to season four, I think. And when I'd first seen Oberyn, it was one of the first times I'd seen a, a bi character who wasn't a, the butt of the joke. Mm -hmm. who wasn't, you know, being laughed at in some way. And that, that had a huge yeah. impact on me. And then <clears throat> I followed Pedro's career and would catch up on anything he'd acted in or anything he'd been in. And then with The Last of Us, he was just incredible. Um, yeah. And so to have somebody who I hold that highly, you know, say anything kind, I mean, spoke incredibly briefly to him, just a quick like, hey, man, love what you do, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And he'd seen a video or two. And just to hear a kind word like that from somebody like him. And I'm, I'm sure he's aware. I'm sure actors or actresses like him or creatives, be it directors, producers, show, show owners, they know. They know how a kind comment or, you know, a well-placed like can completely up somebody's mood and bring someone up yeah. on a down day, you know. So that yeah. The Last of Us will always be special for that reason. For many others, <laughs> but that reason too. It's a good reason. Uh, what film or show do you wish you could erase from your memory and rewatch uh, <laughs> on on camera for the first time again? Oh, oh! I thought we were going somewhere dark with that. That I could erase, <laughs> to, like never watch it. I was like, ooh, there's no, some of them to, to rewatch it to to share the experience with on camera as a reaction. Mm. Maybe Lord of the Rings. Oh yeah, that's a yeah. Good one. 
Yeah, because I know the excitement I got going into the Star Wars universe, knowing nothing, having not seen it, and it was echoed a lot. People were like, whoa. Very rarely, like, you know, do we encounter someone who hasn't seen anything Star Wars? And that was exciting for mm -hmm. me, and it was exciting for them. And I adore Lord of the Rings. I think it's a fantastic franchise. I love The Hobbit as well. Um, <laughs> Rings of Power. <laughs> and I don't know how I feel about that, but the movies, um, the two trilogies, I'd love to erase and get to experience for the first time. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe Twilight. The Twilight, Twilight that'd franchise. Be, that'd, be, that'd be a fun one, I think. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I did like a commentary style video for Twilight, but I made it very clear. I was like, guys, I've seen this film a bazillion times and I will I will <laughs> yeah. I will speak along with the dialogue to prove it to you which I could do so it was more yeah. of just a commentary than a reaction but I think the idea of sitting down to watch Twilight for the first time in 2023 that would be a trippy experience yeah totally that would be fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh and our final question uh what advice would you give to your past self when you first started the channel hmm I've asked people that question before, but I don't think I've ever been asked it. How dare you put me in the seat that <laughs> I put others in? <laughs> in the hot spot. <laughs> hmm. Probably to just be a bit bolder. Have hmm. more faith in yourself. And I think that's advice I could still live by to an extent. I have a way of catastrophizing things. So I would take a, a opportunity or a possibility that could be on the horizon and I will either talk myself out of it or catastrophize it to the point where it, even if the thing happens, I've been so stressed in the lead up that it, it zapped the fun out of it. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, I lost out on so many experiences and things that would have been good for me, just, you know, as a person. Because I was too scared. I was too scared to go somewhere or I was too scared to do something or I was too scared to walk into a room full of people. I mean, one of one of the first Walker Stalkers after my channel started really getting big, I very nearly didn't go because of anxiety. And it was my mom that was like, we're here. We're in the hotel. You have your passes. You've got your photo ops. You're going to, you know, you're going to go and you're going to have a great time. But if she hadn't been there, I don't know what I would have done. Would I run away? Mm -hmm. You know, so I would just tell myself, have a bit more faith in you and not even necessarily your abilities. Just have faith in whatever is meant to be will happen and it will work out. And if it doesn't, then move on. It wasn't meant to be. Or it might circle yeah. back and get you at a later date. You know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a very, very good advice, truthfully, because I, I had similar experience again finding the Shmodown and eventually being here now uh, yeah. with the confidence I have to speak with the people that I want to hear about. And uh, again, to wrap things up, you were one of the first voices I wanted to you know, speak with for this space, um, for this whole community of people. Um, I think your contributions to it are invaluable, truthfully, over the, over the years. I'm very happy to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me and for giving me the time <laughs> to, to talk. I, I don't think I've talked about a lot of what I talked about tonight, which is crazy, given the fact <laughs> you think I would have. Um, yeah. But no, man, that means so much. And like you said, it makes it feel a bit more real. You know, having someone say it to you, having someone say no, like, you know, oh, yeah, I remember that video. Or I remember when you started. And I'm there going, because I don't. <laughs> that really means a lot to me. Like I said, it, it really does mean an awful lot as well that you thought of me, that you thought to reach out and to shoot me the message. Yeah. Of thank course. you so much That's, for having uh, me and for it was it was absolutely wonderful absolutely wonderful time to get to sit and talk thank you that's what we're here for um yeah so thank you guys for listening uh if you find this on youtube please like and subscribe and share all that good stuff uh if you found it through the newsletter please share that as well to spread the good word we can always use more views on that obviously and uh we'll see you around on the next episode uh have a good one bye